Welcome back, kindergartner scientists. Hello, kindergartner scientists. Scientist Katrina here, and I'm back to tell you a little bit more about the experiment you just ran. What did you think of that experiment? Did it make you feel more like a scientist? Well, I'm gonna tell you a little bit about how I, as a grown-up scientist, thought about what you all got to see and work with. So follow me, I'm gonna have to go sit at my desk and put my lab coat on so we can talk more about our experiment. Let's go. What was our scientific question? So now I'm standing at my desk, I put on my lab coat, and I'm ready to focus and help you talk about your experiment. Let's remind ourselves and think again what our experiment was about. The scientific question we were asking was how will caffeine change a baby zebrafish and how it grows? We used a group called the control group that didn't have any caffeine added. This group is what we compared our caffeine group to, so we knew that if anything funny was happening to our caffeine group, it was because it didn't have normal water to grow in. What did we measure? On our zebrafish, we measured the yolk sac, or the amount of food they had left to eat, whether they moved very much, and if their tails were getting longer. If you remember, you used your five senses, or at least your eyes and maybe your ears, to learn a little bit more about the zebrafish. How do scientists get results? As a scientist, we like to use numbers to show how we reached our conclusion or our answer to our scientific question. That's why you counted the alive and dead, measured the size of the zebrafish, and measured the size of their yolk. These are all facts or evidence that we can compare to each other to answer our scientific question. Just like how detectives look for clues to solve a crime, scientists use numbers to support the conclusions they are making. Scientists don't just say, I think the answer is this. They have to run very detailed experiments to say that, just like you did. Using your results. Once you have collected all of your data, you have to make a conclusion or finish the story you're telling based on the different facts. I, based on what I saw, I concluded that zebrafish grown in caffeine are less healthy than zebrafish grown in normal water. I think this because there were more zebrafish dead in the caffeine group after a few days, the caffeine group took way more time to hatch, and the caffeine group had larger yolk sac, which means they weren't eating as much food to help them grow. All of these are signs to me, uh, based on what I know about zebrafish, that they are being less healthy and aren't growing as well. Now, even though I made this conclusion, you might have said something slightly different. Did you think that caffeine might have stopped zebrafish from growing? Did you think that normal water gave zebrafish superpower skills? If we arrived at different conclusions, that's okay. That's one of the awesome things about science, is as long as you have data or numbers from your observations to back up your answer, your conclusion can be correct. It's very important that scientists like you and me get a chance to talk about our experiments with each other. That's how we learn more about what our conclusions and what our data might mean. And you might think I'm right, and I might think you're right, and we get to learn something more along the way. Thank you so much for doing this experiment with me and Scientist Haley. I hope you feel like a real scientist now because you got to practice asking scientific questions, writing hypotheses, generating data, making a conclusion, and solving the mystery that is your zebrafish experiment. And I'm so proud of you that you did it all on your own. I hope you know that you are now a real scientist and know a little bit more about zebrafish too. I can't wait to see you sometime soon. Bye!